One of the questions that I get on the channel a lot is, what is the best desktop environment? And I'm always very curious as to why people wonder this, because the best solution when you're trying to figure out what's best for you is to go forth and try things. You never know what type of soda you like until you try all the sodas. You don't know what kind of food you like until you try the food. It'd be like asking someone else what the best type of food is. If you've never tried it, it doesn't really mean anything because you both have different tastes. You know, one person's going to like Italian food. The other person's going to like Chinese food, you know, or maybe you like fusion or something, or, you know, chicken and waffles. I don't like chicken and waffles, but you might like chicken and waffles. You know, it's a total different thing. I don't know why that particular metaphor came up. It doesn't matter. The point is, when you try to go through and decide what desktop environment is best for you, the answer is going to be different for Bob than it is for Joe. You know, it's just going to be different. And it's, I mean, obviously, not everyone can have a different desktop environment, but they're going to like those, say, even if they both chose, say, XFCE. They're going to like XFCE for different reasons. You know, maybe one of them likes the simplicity, one of them likes the fact that it's stable, whatever. So the question itself is something that is really hard to answer because it's going to be different for every single person. However, I do have a specific answer and I have some good reasons for the choice that I've made. When you're looking for a desktop environment, if you're new to Linux or if you've, you're a long time you know, user of Linux, the things that you look for are going to be different depending on who you are. And there's really only one desktop environment out there that can be suitable for a broad spectrum of users, whether they're new, whether they're old hats, whether they're interested in customizing their desktop environment, whether they're not interested in customizing their desktop environment. There's really only one desktop environment out there that does all of those things reasonably well. And that desktop environment is KD Plasma. Now, I don't think that that's a very big surprise to anybody who has used Linux for a long time. KD Plasma is highly customizable, but it's also fairly stock out of the tin, if you know what I mean. So let's just go ahead and first take a look at KD Plasma as you would expect it to come on most distros that come with a default version of Plasma installed. So this is Manjaro's version of KDE Plasma, and for the most part, if the distribution you're using ships Plasma, this is somewhat what it's going to look like. The theme will probably be a little bit different, you know, different colors and stuff, but the layout is going to be, be similar to this. Now, there are a few exceptions, obviously, if you're using something like Garuda that has a really funky theme and a funky layout, you know, so there are going to be exceptions. But for the most part, this is what Plasma looks like out of the box, and this is a fantastic default layout because it's the most familiar layout anybody's ever going to see. Anybody who has used a computer in the past has used something that has looked like this, and it's because this looks like Windows. Windows has looked like this since Windows, what, 3.1 or whatever it was. I mean, it's looked like, I mean, obviously, the, the Chrome has changed over the years in Windows, but the, the, the layout has basically stay the same and because of that it's like the QWERTY keyboard people type on the QWERTY keyboard because it's not because it's the most ergonomic or even the fastest or whatever it's because it's what we've always used and it'd be really hard to change away it's the same with this layout everybody knows the layout you have the clock on the right hand side you have a menu on the left hand side it looks like the menu looks like this now obviously Microsoft themselves have messed around with the layout now in Windows 11 where it's kind of in the center and it's messing with people's heads and all this stuff. But for the most part, this is what a computer looks like for most people in the world. And that's why this layout here is so good. Now, obviously, this is not unique to KDE Plasma. Things like Cinnamon, things like X XFCE, they all use similar paradigms in terms of laying out their desktop environment. So Plasma can't really claim to be better in this aspect than all the rest. But the reason why I've chosen KDE as the best desktop environment is because of the things that go beyond this initial layout. So when you're first using Linux for the first time or you're coming back to Linux after using Windows for a long time, you don't want to have to mess around with 
the actual desktop environment. You don't want to have to mess around with any of this stuff. You want to be able to focus on finding application alternatives to what you were using before. That's going to be your number one priority. Whether you're trying to replace the Adobe Suite, Microsoft Office, whatever, those are the things you need to be focusing on if you want to switch to Linux before you mess around with any of this stuff. That's the reason why this layout makes the most sense because you don't have to mess with this. You know how this works. You don't have to deal with any learning curve here whatsoever. It just is going to work almost precisely how Windows you know works. Now, obviously, once you get into specific applications like the file manager or the settings application or the you know, the music app or whatever, those are going to work differently. But this default initial layout looks like Windows, feels like Windows, works like Windows. Where KDE Plasma shines beyond what other desktop environments offer you is they all that. Plasma allows you to grow beyond this layout. Now, other desktop environments offer plenty of customization. XFCE, Cinnamon, they all offer some level of customization built in without having to do any hacky things like add a tweak tool or anything like that. And they're good desktop, desktop environments, don't get me wrong, but XFCE is very old-fashioned in terms of how it does things. Their, set, their customization settings are all over the place, and... It, you know, it that's just the way XFCE does it. It takes a lot of learning on how to do stuff, you know, for XFCE that isn't necessarily the most intuitive. You know, it's just do, moving the panel from side to side is a little bit different. You know, it's not as intuitive as something like Plasma is. Things like changing and installing themes like that is not as intuitive as Plasma is because when you install a theme on a GTK-based system like XFCE, pretty much you download that thing and you transfer the theme that you downloaded into a folder. That's how you add the theme. And then you can enable that theme via the settings panel. With Plasma, you have a button. Like there's a button in the settings panel that says get more themes and then it shows you all the themes that are available and you can install them right from there. That's how it should be done and that's how Plasma does it. So the thing about Plasma is that makes it different is that the settings panel has everything crammed into one place. That can sound a lot overwhelming. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at the settings panel here, the settings application. And this has gotten better over the years, like way, way better. It used to be kind of a convoluted mess. Things were in weird places and stuff like that. It's gotten way better. Now, the best thing about this whole settings panel is the search bar. You can go through and just do, search for whatever setting you want and you know it will find it for you because there's a ton of stuff here buried in sub menus and stuff like that so you may not be able to find this stuff so searching for it is great but the point i'm trying to make here is that once you get past that initial layout once you get past that feeling comfortable with linux enough where you can actually start to feel like you want to customize things plasma allows you to do it better than any other desktop environment there's just a, so much here that you can do whether it's changing the theme for the windows for the cursor for whatever for the, the login screen whatever if you want to go through and add scripts like if you wanted to go through and add a tiling script there are tiling scripts available it will automatically tile your windows uh, all available right here from the settings application and i mean i could literally spend hours going through the setting application you know bit by bit if if you know i had that kind of time and still probably not be able to explain every single piece of functionality that this has now obviously that has its downsides because the more complicated you make something the harder it is to learn now personally that's why i've talked about how this is a next step when you're first starting to use plasma you don't mess around with this at all you just don't ever see it unless you absolutely have to unless something unless you're brave enough to get into it like right from the beginning you're really technical and you think you're fine for most people for most new users this is what they do with they just deal with a desktop and the the default theme and they use their computer like this it's when they move past that where they get into the settings application and can discover its power and i think that that's great i think that's the reason i think that in a nutshell boils down to why KD Plasma is so good is because it gives people room to grow and it l allows them to grow further than any other desktop environment out there without extra. Now, I say that because, but I mean, you can always go through and make XFCE or Cinnamon or Budgie or Mate or whatever look however you want, but they always require a little bit of friction 
to do it. Like whether it's installing extensions or finding different widgets or whatever, they all require a little bit of extra work. And Plasma puts all that stuff right in one place. It's in the settings panel. So once people get away from this and get more comfortable in customizing things, there's just a ton of stuff you can do. And the best place to go through and see some of the things that are possible is on Unix porn. So here's one example that we see on Unix porn. Let me get rid of the camera here. And you can see that this person here has gone through and made Plasma look completely different than what you'd ever expected a computer to look. Obviously, it still has a bar, but things are different in different places. It has a different font, has a awesome color scheme, has rounded corners. Uh, they've put a ton of work into this, and it's very complicated. And I'm sure I, even I couldn't go through and rec replicate this without a tutorial. But that's kind of the point, is once you get to that pro level of usage, you can go through and do things like this. Or if you prefer something more Mac OS-ish, if you will, you can create something like this. You know, it has the bar along the bottom and the bar along the top. It's a, it's recreating the Mac. I mean, a lot of people have opinions on Macintoshes, whether it's positive or negative. If you prefer to make your computer look like a Macintosh, it's really easy in, in Plasma. Or, if you wanted to make your computer look something like this. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is Windows Vista, uh, or a Windows Vista lookalike, but we know that it's actually Plasma. It says so right there in NeoFetch. And you can tell it has the same clock that I have down here at the bottom. And uh, it has the, the Pac-Man icon and so on and so forth. So we know that this is actually Linux, but they went through, for whatever reason, and made their desktop look like Windows Vista. And it actually... Looks like Windows Vista. If that's something that you wanted to do, you could go through and do that. And that's really the point. That there is no limits when it comes to Plasma. And I love that about it. I love the fact that if you put in the effort, there's nothing with Plasma that you can't do. There's nothing that the developers say you can't do. There's nothing that you have to go through and find a random repository in order to do. Everything is just in the settings app. And if you can learn those things, you can create amazing things. Also, if you don't want to learn those things, if you have no interest in customizing stuff, Plasma works just fine. You know, it works like the desktop environment works like Windows would work. It has the menu along the side, a time along the bottom, other side, and icons there to open up your applications. It's simple. You don't ever have to change that. And that's why Plasma is good. It encompasses and facilitates usage by a broad spectrum of people, whether they're new or long-time users. So Plasma for me is the best desktop environment. So what I would like to know in the comments below, what you think the best desktop environment is. I'd really love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2, Sun 2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife Tool, Steve A, Sid A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, and the BSC's Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.